Muslim group in Britain wants to create an Islamic state somewhere, but is not making great progress. His book, Tahrir, is banned in a number of Arab countries, as well as Germany and Russia. One of its spokesmen in Denmark was found guilty of inciting racial hatred. My guest today is the group's British spokesman. If they're benign, why are the mainstream Muslim organizations so against them? Imran Wahid, warm welcome to the program. Thank you. How many members have you got? We've got thousands of members, Tim. How many? We're, we're a global Islamic political party. Uh, I mean, how can I, how can I estimate that in numbers? We've got thousands. We're a mass movement. We work throughout well, how the many Muslim thousands? world. 5,000, 6,000, I mean, how many I mean, thousands? I, I don't think I know the exact figure off the top of my you head. You really have no idea how I've much support you I've have. I've really got no idea. I mean, you're a political group. We're, most, a, poli we're a political party which works to establish the Islamic Khilaf for the Islamic State in the Muslim world. But most uh, political parties are falling over backwards to tell people how many members they have and yet you just say thousands. Are, well, you, are you ashamed of how small your membership is? No, no, quite, quite the contrary. I mean, for well, example... Then, then tell us, I mean, I'm sure the, we're dying the, to know. In the UK, over the last few years, tens of thousands of Muslims have attended our conferences. We're you mean the, tens of thousands? You had 10,000 at one point. And you had 8,000 as another, didn't you? Has there been a larger Islamic conference in Britain, Tim? Look, it's a quarter of the size of a football stadium, isn't it? But, it's, not, it's not that much. Is but it? I mean, if you, want, if you want to somehow... Let's be honest about it. This isn't a mass movement, is it? If you wanted to portray us as fringe, how would you say that we, have, we held the largest conference in Britain? What, right. would be, what would be your explanation to that? How would it be that thousands of our members are in jail in Uzbekistan? Well, but why aren't you a political party then with mem MPs in the House of Commons then if you're such a mass movement? Because Islam is built on a completely different fundamental philosophy to Western secularism. Well, there are mus Muslim MPs in the House of well, Commons. They don't seem to mind. Well, there's a completely different set of values here and this is very important uh, that we understand this. In democracy and in Western capitalism, man is the one who decides what is right and wrong. In Islam, we believe our creator, Allah, has decided what is right and wrong. Isn't that just a way of explaining away the fact that you don't dare to go before the electorate because you've actually got nothing to offer them? Millions of people are marching all around the Muslim world and we have completely changed the political... I don't see millions. I don't see millions. I saw a million in London marching against the Iraq war. I don't see millions in the Islamic world. I saw 40,000 the other day in Saudi Arabia, which was something new, but I don't see millions. In 50 years... You fling around these in, figures... In 50 years, Tim, we have... nothing to back them up. In 50 years, Tim, we have completely transform the political landscape of the Muslim world to a world where now we feel we're on the brink of establishing this state. You haven't transformed anything, have 50 you? Years, Run, 50 years ago. What have you transformed? 50 years ago, the Muslim world had ideas like Arab nationalism. The Muslim world looked up to the West. Now the Muslim world, people in the Muslim world, are looking for an Islamic Khilafah. They know the West has failed. Who is? The West, Who is? How the many West of them? is imposing their values on the Muslim world. How do you know any of this? Of You've gun. never tested any of this. You fling around figures like millions marching. Where are millions marching? Oh, just, is, there an election? The is there an election in any Muslim country which is not rigged? Let's him. just deal with the first part of this. Where are the millions marching? Place. We've seen, time. we've seen, Where? at the time of the Iraq war, we've seen millions of people in Egypt march in Tahrir Square. We've seen demonstrations. Seen millions. The largest demonstration here was, was in, actually in London. Okay, I'm not, not necessarily talking about a single demonstration, but we have seen across the Muslim world people rising up saying we are fed up of these corrupt puppet rulers and we want to see a change in the Muslim world. These are not people marching to your tune. Are these they? are people, we have These are people maybe political... fed up with the lack of democracy in, in uh, Muslim countries. Um, that's something a lot of people would agree about. Well, but that West, doesn't mean they're dancing to your tune. The West it? likes to keep the Muslim countries with autocratic, dictatorial regimes. It has very cordial relations with the likes of Karimov, who boils his political opponents in Uzbekistan, with the likes of Mubarak, with the likes of Fahad, and with the likes of Musharraf, with whom Western leaders very regularly rub shoulders. So you don't have a problem in the West with these dictatorships. Some people don't have a problem with their dictatorship. There have been calls to have you banned because you incite racist hatred. You're banned in a number of Arab countries. You're banned in Holland and Germany, apparently for associating with neo-Nazi groups. Any comment on that? We are banned in the Muslim world, Tim, because we want to discard the rulers in the Muslim world in the dustbin of history. What about Holland and Germany? That is a Associating with neo-Nazi if, if you let me finish. I would, um, but if you just address that point. I will come to your point. But the first point about being banned in the Muslim world 
is very clear. We are banned because we want to discard these rulers in the dustbin of history. We want to establish an Islamic state which ends political subservience to Washington and London, which unifies the armies, resources, and lands of the Muslims, which brings about economic sovereignty, and which ends our dependence for our defense on the Western who countries. Who are you to demand And this? which, and who are you which to expels, expels who are the you, Western multinational Imran Rahim, corporate companies. Who are you to demand all this? This is what the Muslims are demanding. Which Muslims? Yesterday in Pakistan, there was a conference there are of thousands of There are plenty of Muslims who don't people. want anything to do with you, particularly in this country. Khalid Mahmoud, okay. the MP for Birmingham, says you should be treated in the same way as the British National Party, as a fringe element in our society. You're misguiding a lot of young people who haven't developed their own religious beliefs and only represent a small percentage of the UK Muslim opinion. That's is, is this the meaning of democracy, to silence anyone who ha and, and, and to and to ensure that all they voice is Western secular thought. This is a man who this actually tested his popularity at the ballot box, which you don't dare to do. This is a man who is an outcast in the Muslim community for supporting the war on Iraq. Iraq. He got voted into parliament. The war on Iraq. He got voted into parliament and supported the sake. war on Iraq. So, so, so he's still a member of parliament. He tested himself at the ballot box, something you wouldn't dare to do. No, of course we would, but we don't when, have a rigged election when. like we're seeing in the Muslim countries. You expect you don't that. have rigged elections here in, in the this Muslim country. Countries. You don't have rigged elections. Are, he's, a, he's an MP here. Actually. We are, not, we are not in the Arab. We are world. advocating Tim an Islamic Khilafah in the Muslim world. We are working very actively amongst the people of influence in the Muslim world, including politicians and the army, in order for them to bring about this change. We are advocating. Neo-Nazi groups in Holland and Germany. We call on generals in the Muslim world. Neo-Nazi groups in Germany and Holland. Well, I think what we've seen. Happy to associate with them. What we've seen, Tim. Since nine you don't say no, so we can draw our appropriate conclusions. If, if you let me answer the question. Uh, well, you've had, uh, you've had, three, you've had three opportunities now, and you've chosen not to. Okay, you, wanna, you ask me about our position yeah. on neo-Nazi groups. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very simply, it is well known that Islam does not allow Muslims to incite racial hatred. Islam, in fact, molded people uh, successfully, irrespective of their race and creed, into one society, unlike the West, which has found it very difficult to integrate minorities into society. And this the courts found problem. differently. The courts found that you did incite racial hatred in, in Denmark. Well, since 9-11, Tim, what we've seen, if I could comment about the Denmark case, what we've seen since 9-11 is anyone who is against the state of Israel is classed as anti-Semitic. I've even read of you, Tim, being accused of being anti-Semitic after your interview with Ehud Barak. Many in Israel accuse you of being anti-Semitic. Why? Because you gave him a bit of a roasting. So I think the issue here well, is... When I, when I give someone from the Arab world a bit of a roasting, I'm accused of being anti-Muslim. Anti that's not the and point. Anti -Arab. That's if not the talk, point. That the doesn't point mean is, anything. The that's point a meaningless is, the point statement, is, Imran Wahid. Israel, Israel, Israel is a country which occupies Muslim land. We support the right of Muslims everywhere to, to resist that occupation from militant okay, democracy. Okay, the court found against like Britain, Britain, so I suppose like the, Israel, the Danish like court was rigged, was it? That was rigged. Well, it was to hand it out leaflets, it was quoting from the motivated to why silence, it, why? To silence why? Anyone, anyone who is opposed to the Israeli's, Israeli state's occupation. It didn't silence anyone, it happened to silence you because your spokesman handed out leaflets quoting from the Quran saying, kill them, Jews, wherever you find them, and turn them out from wherever they have turned you out. Why don't you quote our other leaflets, Tim, which talk about the treatment of Jews and Christians in the Islamic State? Why don't you quote the fact that Muslims fought in the past and spilt their blood for the Jews when they were attacked by Christian crusaders? Why don't you talk about the fact that Jews fled the Spanish Inquisition and went to the Islamic Khilafah in Istanbul? The Why don't you quote said, all of our leaflets? Well, I'm just quoting, I haven't got time to quote all your leaflets. Well, you're quoting but I can quote almost oh, this, is what, this is what every politician said, and you've used that line before. I suggest you get a new one because it actually doesn't really apply. Um, it is because what the court is found, What the court found, and this isn't selective, what the court found was that linking the quote from the Quran to the subsequent description of Jews as a people characterized negatively is an evident statement of a threat against Jews. Your statements were threats against Jews, weren't they? Okay, no I, doubt about it whatsoever. I think, I think you've made a very serious point, and I'd like to answer the Please. point. The point is, Tim, this has got nothing to do with Jews. This is really? to do with our opposition to the occupation of our land, whether it by, by Jews or anyone else. We oppose the occupation of our land in Israel, uh, uh, the occupation of our land in Kashmir, the occupation of Iraq, the occupation of Afghanistan, of Chechnya. This has nothing to do with Jews. To make it, narrow it down, to say that this is something to do with Jews, uh, is, is preposterous. This is to do with the right of Muslims to resist occupation of their land. 
And, and it seems the to me that... So violence is okay as long as you call it resistance. That's all right. The West it? has no problem with violence. Violence is okay, I'm asking you what your opinion is. We talked to the West about their opinion, I'm asking you about yours. Your spokesman, Sajad Khan, you know him? Go on. At a conference entitled British or Muslim, said, I don't think Israel has the right to exist, and we believe legitimate force can be used to remove that. I completely endorse his opinion. Israel does so, not have a so right to exist. Israel has no right to exist. It is an occupying force. We believe, that, and we have always articulated Israel has no the case. Right to exist. Okay. Let me finish my point. We have articulated the case that the Islamic Khilafah, when it returns, will unify the Muslim lands and their armies and will deal with this occupation. So the goal is the destruction of Israel, that you're happy with that? We are. We are happy that the, the destruction occupation... Destruction of Israel. The occup don't put words into my mouth. The no, I'm asking you. So let me answer. You say, you don't think Israel has the right to exist. The I'm occupation... Saying, so therefore you support the destruction of Israel. We support the reversal of the occupation. What we does that support. mean, the reversal of the occupation? We, when the Islamic Khilafah returns... No, no, we're will, asking what we, you support now. We will, it hasn't we will remove the occupation. We are working for the Islamic Khilafah, and it is on the horizon. We can see the portents of it all the time. And we believe legitimate force can be used to remove that. What is legitimate force? Legitimate force is an army. The Islamic right. army of right. the Islamic State, the Islamic Khilafah. Not suicide bombers, then? Well, we believe, as I said to you, Muslims have the right to resist occupation. So if, if that means that they have to undertake such actions to resist occupation, we will never condemn that. So as long as it's called resistance, you don't mind what, you what, don't do mind you what it? kind do of you violence. What, we call it terrorism, actually. Well, terrorism, and the Palestinian Authority calls it terrorism as well, well. Well, I condemn terrorism if by terrorism you mean the attacks on innocent civilians in Afghanistan and Iraq, if you mean the actions of the rulers of the Muslim world in rounding up Muslims like me who call for political Islam, uh, supported by Western states, I hasten to add, that's what I call terrorism. Terrorism is not defending your land from occupation. The Palestinians whose houses have been demolished, who have been dispossessed of their land, who are denied basic health care, whose orange groves and the food chain has been destroyed, you call them so, terrorists. So, so, so let's just, let's just synthesize what you've said. You want Israel to be destroyed and you don't care how that is brought about. I've said to you very clearly... Fact. So you are inciting violence against the state of Israel? Very clearly, I've said to you, let me state my position. Or are you going to hide in semantics? No, in I'm order, not. In I'm order not. to stay, it's, it's the West that hides in semantics. The, law. You the, want the, the West incite, talks about collateral damage. Hatred, use semantics to stay just within the law, don't you? This is your tactic. My obedience is not to any law. My obedience is to the law well, of the Creator. So you don't creator. care about the laws of Britain? My obedience, you don't care about my the laws obedience of is to the law of the Creator. You don't care about the laws of Britain? I don't Britain. care about the laws of Pakistan, where my parents were born, or the laws of Britain. I care for the laws of my Creator. Why, like do, you stay here? Why do you stay here if you, if, you, if you don't care about the laws of I Britain? I mean, that's the kind of defeatist kind of question, isn't no, it? That, no, it's a very good question. We don't question. want to argue with a lot you. Why don't you leave? A lot of, people, leave? A lot of people would ask you that question. I feel I have a responsibility, as other Muslims in Britain do, to articulate the case for political Islam. We believe Islam... Saki Badawi, who's principal of the Muslim College in London, asks why you live in a society that you reject, yet you take advantage of all the freedoms this society offers. To say the kinds of things here in Britain that you wouldn't have a chance of saying in most Muslim countries. We say these things in the Muslim world. Our he says you're abusing prison. the freedom. Our abusing members, the freedom our, our that members, you have here. Our members are in prison in the Muslim world. And as for the idea of freedom, we have seen freedom very quickly overturned in America where people have been incarcerated in Guantanamo Bay. So we don't hold our breath as far as freedom goes. And what is the level to which this freedom is used? Does the ordinary person in Britain, does he affect politics? Or is politics controlled by the corporate well, they vote, elites? They vote a government in and they can vote a government out. As, You've uh, seen and, that and happen, as, haven't Lord, you? as Lord Hailsham said in 1976, this is an elective dictatorship. Does it mean you can vote someone in for four years and then go to sleep? No, it requires participation. What, by that's the elites? Another, that's by another law of democracy. By the, the elites don't have a larger vote than the ordinary person. Do you vote in this country? Well, 200 corporations Do you in the vote? world. Two, no, of course I don't vote. Why don't you vote? 200 then? corporations. You're talking about democracy and people who have... I don't talk about... I never talk about democracy. You talk about the... We don't believe in it. democracy. No, you don't. We don't believe in democracy. That's we a believe, bad fact, isn't we it? Believe, no, democracy means you can change the laws from one time to another. Our laws are constant and unchanging. What so, I don't understand, so you don't mind inciting hatred, even though that might bring you before the courts. Your website, kilifa.com, April the 6th last year. The Jews are a people of slander. They're treacherous people who violate oaths and covenants. They lie and change words from their right places. 
They take the rights of people in just, unjustly. This region, especially Palestine, has suffered from their evil for about 50 years. The martyrdom operations against them are legitimate. Straight incitement of hatred and violence, isn't it? I've told you before, Tony. Unless you want this to hide behind semantics. This is not again. an issue about Jews. I've told you very clearly. But you make it when you we talk about talking Jews about on your we website. We are talking about the occupation I'm only, of Muslim I'm land. only picking up what you've put okay. on your website. Well, well, let me clarify what we've put on our website. I, and as I've said, you've been very selective in that you haven't quoted our leaflets. Well, I can't about the quote people, everything, and you know, know that perfectly well. I know well. That, I know you that. either stand by what you've written or you don't. That's the question, isn't it? I've said to you Not very whether clearly. I quote I've said to you very clearly. whether you're prepared to stand Let's state by our it. position. Let's state our position very clearly. Israel is a land that occupies Muslim land. From our position, it has no right to exist. And therefore, we will seek, when the Islamic Khilafah returns, we will seek to reverse the occupation, not only in Palestine, but in Kashmir, in Iraq, and in Afghanistan. That is our position, right? You support, uh, on, you, on the question of your position. Of Jews, please, let me, let me make this very clear. Jews were very well treated under the Islamic State. At the time of the Spanish Inquisition, they went to Istanbul, the seat of the Islamic Khilafah. Well, let's Muslims talk about Istanbul. Jews. Let's talk about Istanbul. Let's talk about the bombings that okay. took place outside the two synagogues. Do you support that? I'm glad you raised that. Islam does not condone such activities where innocent civilians... So you condemn that? Where you? Innocent, I've just answered your question. Islam does not condone such activities. If Islam doesn't condone them, I don't condemn them. Where innocent civilians who are going about their, their worship are attacked in such a manner. What sad you condemn that what? bombing then, do you? Let me move Can on. Can we have it on the record that you condemn that bombing? I've said that, that Islam does not condone... But you haven't said what you felt. I've said Islam. And I said, you I, I, said I don't Islam. You're not Islam. You're you. You're, you're Imran Wali. I'm an course. ambassador of Islam. That's the role of every Muslim. So you condemn it? Then. I don't condone it. And if you could let me finish, please. Very simply, what saddens me, Tim, is that Istanbul, which was the seat of the Khilafah, now Western secularism has created a climate of fear and insecurity across the whole world where people going about their religious worship are attacked in such a manner. That is what saddens me. It's the legacy of Western secularism imposing Western values in the Muslim world. That right. is what I find very saddening. So I, would, I would like to hear you say, I condemn those bombings in Istanbul. Why? Why do you want Why me to say so that? Why is it so difficult? Why do you want me to say Why that? Why is it so difficult? It's not difficult. I'll condemn them. Good. But I, I, I very clearly start out my point. What saddens me is not only do I condemn such a bombing, but I condemn Western secularism for creating this fear and insecurity in the Muslim world. And I, I'm saddened by the fact that when the Islamic Khilafah existed, Muslims and Jews lived together. What the colonialists have created is a situation where Muslims and Jews in Palestine are in a situation where both of them, either they be killed or they are killed. This is a very sad situation. And, and you have done nothing to create fear. You have done nothing to create fear. You have done nothing to stir up bad feelings between the various communities. No, no I don't think none, so. none of that at all. No, I, I would say that we haven't. What I would say is, in fact, Hizb al-Tahrir is probably the only Islamic party in the world which has gone to minority groups in the Muslim world, like Jews and Christians, and explain to them our vision of an Islamic State. And we have been at the forefront of articulating the position of non-Muslims in the Islamic State. So why do mainstream Muslim state. organizations all reject you? I think today we need to talk about the moderates are now in the fringe. Dr. Don't Mohammed Nassim, chairman of the Central Mosque in Birmingham, he says you are an extreme group and don't represent the majority of Muslims. Well, my Islamic political group is preying on people who can't think for themselves and your ideas you will only increase tensions between Muslims and the community. Well, well this is a kind of, uh, uh, I mean, I have, Islamic, I have Islamic etiquette, so I'm not going to involve myself in a slanging match with this man. No, but I mean, um, here is a contrary well, I view. Discuss, I want to discuss with There's such a people. View. And we discuss with such people all the time. And this is a problem. Discussion throughout the world is being silenced in favor of Western-imposed values. The Muslim world is ready for the Khilafah, Tim. There is no Islamic state in the world. But not it. according to mainstream Muslim organizations. I have the majority of Muslims all over the world. You've been very selective in who you've spoken to. The majority of Muslims all over the world want the Islamic Khilafah. All it well, takes you, is, say, you say they do and they say they don't. All it takes All it takes is one phone call from a general in one of the armies in the Muslim world to realize that it's about time he rescued the dignity of the Muslim people from the Western colonialists. What amazes me is that you talk about the injustice of the occupation of Palestinians. You never talked about the injustices that Saddam Hussein wreaked on his own people, the torture and the murder that went on. Why not? If you cared about people and the conditions they lived in, fellow Muslims, you would have proved that 
by saying something about the conditions in Iraq, but you never did. Why not? Don't talk to me about Saddam Hussein, Tim. I'll be very clear with you. Saddam Hussein butchered our members. Some of the children of our members were put through mince meat machines as torture. Our members have been at the forefront of the struggle in Iraq to remove the Ba'ath regime when the rulers of the West what were struggle? supporting. What struggle? We're supporting the what Iraqi struggle? regime. We have been involved in political work do? in Iraq. What, what political work? Our organization. Where we, was the we condemnation? Were, we were, uh, of course we have Where? condemned Saddam Hussein. Where? We have condemned every single ruler of the Muslim world, not mainly for being a lackey of the West. And that is the reality. We condemn today. I'll condemn before you today. Musharraf, who locks up his political opponents, Karimov, who boils his political opponents, Mubarak, who tortures his political opponents, Fahad, who tortures his political opponents, all of these people are in cahoots with the West. We condemn every single one of these rulers unreservedly. We condemn Saddam Hussein in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, and throughout the 90s, when the West were arming this man. This is nothing Where? to do with Saddam Hussein. Where? Yeah, of Where? course, of Where? course we Point have. Point to it. Leaflets, Dates, times. leaflets. Dates, times. In, in multiple leaflets, we have said that the regime in Iraq is a non-Islamic regime which needs to be removed. We have mentioned that many times. Abdul Ghani al Malla was our first martyr of our party who was killed in Baghdad. So you cannot say uh, that we are not opposing such rulers. We are opposing such rulers You're and we are opposing Western hegemony over these lands. Are you at war with Britain? The issue here... Do you here, consider yourself to be at war with Britain? I'm living in Britain and at this... Do you consider Britain, yourself to be at war with Britain? It's a very simple question because on October the 14th, 2001, your group wrote in a community, what Britain and America are doing is displaying their enmity for Islam. They are enemies. A state of war exists between them and all the Muslims that necessitates adopting an actual state of war as a basis for dealing with them according to the dictates of the Sharia rules. My question, very simply, yes or no, are you personally at war with Britain? Britain, America, are occupying Muslim land. We support the right of people to resist that occupation. Are you at war with Britain personally? Muslims? have the right to resist occupation. That's not, that's not an answer to my question. It Are you at war? No, it isn't. I'm asking you whether you consider yourself to be at war with Britain. It's a yes or no question. Britain occupies Muslim land, and therefore Muslims have the right... You're afraid to answer the question, aren't you? I'm because not, you're trying... To everything it. you do I'm not trying to, to it. stay just within the law, isn't it? Just within no, the grounds of, I've, I've bounds of I've acceptability. I've got no respect this for... This is your tactic. I've got no it? respect for any law other than Allah's. So I, I don't care about the law, to be honest, Tim. What I care about yes, you is do it articulating... because you'll be closed down or, or jailed or whatever, won't you? Well, as you said, we've been banned in the Muslim world exactly. for a global cause. So you're trying not and to we'll get banned. And we'll continue our work. Trying just to stay within the law in Britain, the laws that you say you don't care we'll, about. We'll continue our work, irrespective. If we have to say the unpalatable term, I care for the laws of Islam. I don't care for the law of any man. And all Muslims would support that. All Muslims care for the law of Islam. They want the Islamic Khilafah. Why is it that the West does not want Muslims to decide their own political destiny? We have a different way of life from people in the West. Different Muslims, Imran Wahid, want different things. We've come to the end. Thank you very much for being with us on the program. Thank you.